What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Pi game and Python tutorial. Um, in the last video we were adding sounds, before that we were adding images, uh, a bunch of crazy stuff with multimedia and, and, and cool artsy things. Um, now we're going to take it a little bit easier. We're going to get into event handling, the uh, the big thing that I was telling you about earlier on in the, in the series that is nifty and a cool part of Pi, Pi game and Python. Um, and that's down at the very bottom of our code. That's where we have our event loop and our event handling situation. So I'm going to kind of code fold the block object and really just focus on the event handling down here. Um, Pygame.event is where a lot of these things stem from, and that's where you should kind of be orienting a lot of your thought if you're looking into the cool things that you can do with this. Um, if you check it out in the documentation, there's obviously pygameevent.get, that's what we were looking at before, and it'll get events from the queue, and the queue will keep track of all of the possible events, or kind of things that are happening within your program. Like, obviously, the user pressing the close button is an event, and the user moving the mouse, like I am frantically, is an event. The user pressing down on the mouse button is an event. The user pressing a key on the keyboard is an event. The user releasing a key on the keyboard is an event. There is so many things that could happen. And this documentation keeps track of it all, and it keeps track of the things that you can do with it. You can remove things, or kind of test for things that may may or may not be allowed on your queue. You can block some events, post events, you can even add events yourself, kind of automate the process. You can create events. You have tons of options here. For now, we're going to keep it simple with event.get, and just test for the different kinds of events. Okay, let's move on here. There is a list all of the different events that actually happen. Obviously, pygame.quit is what we saw earlier, and we still use that in our code to this day. We will very likely continue with that. <laughs> and um, key down is important whenever a key is pressed. Key up is important whenever a key is released. Mouse motion, whenever the mouse moves. These are the things that it will return, or at least the uh, properties that are kind of associated with it. Mouse button up, mouse button down. You can even control with a, a joystick or a controller. It'll change what happens when the video is resized, and we actually have that functionality in our code because we had that flag in our in our set mode function. Also, uh, user events when you supply anything that you want to happen all on your own. So there's a lot of cool things that you can do with this, and let's actually test for some of those things right now. I'm wondering if it showed any uh, lists of possible constants or things that kind of represent in Pygame, and I mean especially for key presses, because that's what we're going to get into. We can test if the event.type, as you saw the event.type is going to equal any of those things that we were just looking at in that list, Pygame.quit, like you can see above, or perhaps Pygame.keyDown. And once we know that, okay, yeah, a key has been pressed, we should know what key that is, right? What if we test... Uh, event.key. Rather than event.type, now we're looking at event.key, and that can tell us, okay, did we press, oh, I don't know, the um, A key? And the way that we test for that in Pygame is actually the capital K, an underscore, and then the lowercase letter that we'd be looking at. So in this case, capital K underscore A, we can say, ooh, you pressed the A key. And very, very simple. Let's run this code. Let's just see what happens. Super duper easy. Super duper cool. We got our window. If I press the A key, look, you press the A key right over there. I can do this as many times as I want, and the handle will still handle them appropriately. That's the benefit of the event loop. All right. We can do many, many things with that. Let's say, let's even, let's even try to kind of nest some of these things. If the event.type is equal to pygame.quit or... I'm going to continue this. What if we test if the event.type is equal to pygame.keyDown, like we had beforehand? Actually, let's remove that for now. pygame.keyDown and pygame.event, or in this case, sorry, event.key, that can equal k escape, right? Or pygame.event. I think it's actually, I think you do spell out the word escape. Or pygame dot, or sorry, event dot key can equal, and I should be using 
two equal signs here for testing whether or not it's true, or K, uh, Q. And then it'll still kind of stop the program. Will that work for us? Let's check it out. Nope. I have a new lines here, so I'm going to actually escape those with a backslash. Now that should work, okay. Okay, now I got on my window. If I hit the escape key, escape is not defined. Alright, let's try just ESC. Let's try that one. That's not defined either. <laughs> Key escape. Oh, duh. I do have to preface it with Pygame. It is part of the Pygame module. <laughs> well, I'm glad I made that mistake, so now, for future reference, you guys will not, hopefully. Hit the escape key. Okay. That closes. Hit the Q key. Let's test it. And that closes. Awesome. And you can test for things like um, space, or I think it might be return or enter, or backspace. You've got a lot of good options here. You can probably look online for a list of these constants and, and things that Pygame will actually recognize. And you can build up a good repertoire of nifty things that you can do with your keyboard. <laughs> Alright, now let's move into something different. In fact, let's move into something different in the next tutorial. <laughs> That's right, guys, I want to end this episode off on a cliffhanger, even though it's not really a cliffhanger. Um, you'll see me in probably a few seconds, or at least hear me in a few seconds. Um, yeah. In the next video, we're going to be looking at how we can move with the mouse and the mouse objects and that sort of thing. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you're enjoying the series. Talk to you later.